You're on your Feel Good Breakfast show coming to you live from Johannesburg. And oh my goodness, no, you are not on the wrong channel. You are right. It is S3. And of course, this is exactly where you get to wake up in the best way possible. And my name is Zanele Poterwa. Just in case you may have missed me being joined by the Cape Town family and being introduced by them. I'm new to the family, but today I genuinely feel like it is a huge one because we are not just celebrating the fact that Expresso now has a Johannesburg studio, but we are also celebrating the fact that it is World Diabetes Day, which is all about getting into what exactly is diabetes about in terms of trying to live the most optimal life you can when you do have it. And if you did not know, it is actually the number one killer in the in South Africa, rather, when it comes to women, and the second leading killer when it comes to men. And this is why this morning we are joined by a registered dietitian, Simone Blichnot, who's going to be letting us know today about some tips and tricks that we can use in terms of possibly living that best life that we can, even when we have diabetes. Simone, how are you this morning? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me to this today. Of course. And I'm so glad that you are here because I feel like you're going to be our Nelson Mandela who's going to open the life gate on World yes. Diabetes Day. So let's start from the beginning, right? Yeah. In terms of being pre-diabetic, what yes. exactly does that mean? And, you know, what are the different things that we can look out for when this possibly, you know, shows up for someone? Okay, so pre-diabetes is what usually precedes di the diabetic diagnosis. So what's a little bit scary about it is that you don't always like notice it that much as with the diabetes itself mm. because with diabetes you'll have those symptoms of excessive thirst, excessive hunger, sure. like unintentional weight loss but with pre-diabetes it's just like a little bit of an elevation in your blood sugar levels above yeah. normal but not yet to the degree of that can make a diabetes diagnosis. Mm. Yes. And of course you mentioned some of the symptoms that people can look out for. Yes. You know, when do you get to the point where you're like, I need to go and see a doctor and this could possibly yes. be diabetes? So I would do regular checkups because like I mentioned with the pre-diabetes, you don't necessarily always get the symptoms of that. Mm. There's a lot of undiagnosed pre-diabetes out there, which is a little bit scary. Sure. And when we catch it early, we still have a chance to make it a little bit better and like reverse the effects of the insulin resistance whereas if it's getting to the point of diabetes it yeah. does become a lifelong condition yes so, yes so it can be not too late for you yes. as long as you pick up on those things and you go to yeah. your screening you should be okay Definitely. that is yeah. so good to hear and if i'm somebody who perhaps then has gone to the doctor and i hear about the fact that i'm pre-diabetic yes. what can i do to try and stay away from this and possibly be on that right track like okay. you said perfect so it would definitely require a little bit of lifestyle modifications from mm. your side so like doing a little bit of extra physical activity, losing that excess body fat sure. and adjusting your dietary patterns a little bit. Mm, and yes. just in terms of being pre-diabetic as well, yeah. uh, when it comes to affecting your life, is it yes. something where you can still just 100% get back to your life 100% in terms of just yeah. living normally? Definitely. Mm. It doesn't have to be like a life sentence. You can still manage it and get it right as well. Yes. Just with a little bit of adjustments and modifications. Sure, and just on World Diabetes Day, can I also ask you, maybe perhaps to somebody who's out there, who yes. just honestly feels like, you know what, things are a little bit hectic when it comes to this, you know, the path that they're on. Yes. Who are the people that they can possibly reach out to and some of the things that they can get into yes. to just be like, I'm okay? There's, there's actually a lot of support systems out there mm. for people with diabetes. And there's like the amazing CDE center as well that people can reach out to. and. They have a whole range of doctors, yeah. nurses, educators that can just help them as well. And yeah. speak to me also just in terms of, because we know in the family, everything and anything can be passed down. Yes. So let's talk about, you know, when it comes to our genes. Is it yes. something if my mother has prediabetes mm -hmm. or is diabetic, it can be passed on to me? It definitely has a genetic factor as well. Sure. So when you have a family history of diabetes, you can have a genetic predisposition, therefore. Mm. So when acted upon with a lack of physical activity, poor eating habits, and just a bad lifestyle, it can lead to insulin resistance that can then lead to the development of diabetes. Mm. But it doesn't have to be that if your family has diabetes that you will just get diabetes. You can still have a lot of effects on that outcome. Sure, and Simone, you've made me feel so much better because it runs in my family. So I'm trying to not get it at all. Don't have to worry. Thank you, thank you so much. And of course, I, I do hope we get to speak to you again because the work Perfect. that you're doing is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. Make sure that you stick around because we are going to be getting into some more right here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's my Feel Good Breakfast Show. 
You're on your Feel Good Breakfast show right here on S3. Yes, it is Expresso. As I told you earlier on, my name is Zanela, coming to you live from the Johannesburg studio. If you do not know, it is a brand new thing to the show, and we'll be getting into more about it a little bit later on. But of course, it is still World Diabetes Day, and this is why we brought in a registered dietitian to help us in terms of just a little bit of the tips and tricks we can use when we are talking about staying away from even just being pre-diabetic, but also what it means when you do have type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Simone, thank you so much for being here yet again. Thank I you. genuinely want to get into this because yes. I know, right, that like I said to you, my family, diabetes runs through it. Yes. And I remember when I was younger, they once told me that I would have to stay away from carbs altogether yes. if I got it. And that was one of the biggest ways that I started, you know, doing a little bit of exercise and trying yes. to be a little bit good. Yes. But can I ask you, yeah? is that actually true that I need to stay away from carbs if mm. I'm diabetic? Not necessarily. Sure. So you don't have to stay away from all carbs all the time. Mm. So you can make a few switches. Mm. So we have what we call high GI and low GI carbs. Okay. So it's about the glycemic index. So sure. it's how quickly those carbs will increase your blood sugar after eating it. So okay. obviously the high glycemic carbs can lead to a little bit of high blood sugar levels. While as the lower GI carbs can lead to more stable blood sugar levels. Mm. So some examples of that would include white bread, white pasta yeah. as high glycemic carbs. And like low glycemic carbs would include whole fiber pasta, like whole wheat pasta, yeah. bulgur weeds, and some starchy veggies like your beetroot, butternut, etc. Mm, white bread is never beating the allegations of being bad for us. <laughs> uh, but, Simone, I did want to sort of turn this into a little bit of a true or false, right? Yes. Let's get into the snacks. Is it okay. true that you need to stay away from them? No, not necessarily. Sure. Okay. For some people, it can actually help manage your blood sugar throughout the day, especially if you have long periods in between the meals as well. Yes. yes. Uh, oh my goodness, I, I literally did not know that, especially because, like I say, yes. I've got family who just completely stays away from yes, it because yes, of yes. those things. But there are certain fruits that they also stay away from. Yes. Which side are we on in terms of the fruits that are good for us and the fruits that aren't good for us when it comes to diabetes? So it's again with that glycemic index response. Mm. So you want to stay away from the ones that can have a large glycemic response, okay. like examples would include banana, watermelon, grapes, dates, and some fruit juice. Mm -hmm. And some of the lower glycemic fruits will then include narches, berries, apples, etc. Yes. yes. Uh, okay. I, I like this. So it's all about just finding a balance yes. and really just getting you through yeah. it, right? So not making carbs the bad guy necessarily. Come on. Okay. Yes. So, so I'm bad for like putting white bread in the bad light. You, know? <laughs> you can have like a little bit, just not too much. Yes. All about the balance that you create as well. Okay. And speak to us a little bit about, you know, when it comes to our weight, because yes. I've been told that it's a fact that the heavier you weigh, yes. the more you are, you know, a little bit inclined to getting diabetes. Yes. So what exactly does that mean in terms of what we need to do in terms of our weight. So the, there's a little bit of truth to that, but mm -hmm. I th feel like we need to make the distinguish this distinction between heavy weight and excess body fat. Ooh. Because you can also weigh a little bit heavy because of extra muscle. Mm. But it's more the excess fat that can lead to diabetes as well. Yeah. Especially the excess fat around the organs, which is called the visceral fat. Sure. Yes. Ah, Simone, you did not buy your qualification, when <laughs> I can tell, because what you said about, you know what, in terms yes. of the excess fat, I never looked at it that way, yes. because everybody's different in terms of what that means, right? Exactly. Yeah. But just talk to us a little bit about, as well, just in terms of, you know, the people that you would possibly be living with and the people that might have diabetes. How yes. can we make it easier for, let's say, our loved ones who do have it, and let's yes. say I don't, but I'm trying to just, you know, be a little bit supportive? Yes. So I feel like you should also be kind to them and not be like, you can't have this, you can't have this, because mm. they're already dealing with a lot of pressure and stress from their diagnosis if they have diabetes. Yeah. And just to like assist them in a way, but not to make it more difficult. Mm. So to have a healthy balanced meals with them yeah. and to eat with the family and not have separate meals for them and separate meals for the rest of the family. Yeah. Because that causes a lot more pressure as well. Sure. <laughs> and just in terms of when we're talking about, you know, the fact yes. that diabetes is the number one killer when it comes to women and the second leading killer when it comes to men, yes. can you speak to us about why it's so important for us to not just have these conversations, but more than mm -hmm. anything else, also really just be in the know in terms of diabetes? Yes. So diabetes is definitely, it can is generally like a progressive condition. Mm. So if you don't manage it well, it can just get worse and worse and worse. Sure. And it is, like I said, if you have diabetes, it does become a lifelong condition, mm. which can then lead to other health conditions like cardiovascular diseases. 
You see, these are the things that people don't know. So yeah. Simone, like I said before, thank you so much for just the work that you're doing and coming yeah. through and having this conversation yeah. with us. And happy World Diabetes Day. Thank you, you too. As we said earlier on, it is all about making sure that we have the information because we heard the facts today with Simone and we will be getting into so much more on the show. However, right about now, you've got to make sure that you stay tuned because there's still a whole lot more on the menu on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's my Feel Good Breakfast Show. You know that between the times of 6 to 9 a.m., Monday to Friday, the breakfast just also feel good right here on S3 on Expresso. But every single Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday now, we're going to be coming to you live along with Cape Town in Johannesburg as well with me, Zanele. And this is the really beautiful thing. We're going to be having some of the most incredible guests. As you heard, of course, Nam Tobo is in the house. But right now, we are celebrating World Diabetes Day with someone who I genuinely feel like is doing such incredible work. She is a registered dietitian. It is Simone Bluchnote, who is helping us in terms of finding out how we can maintain a healthy lifestyle with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So Simone, let's start off with type 1 diabetes, you know. What are the different th things that we can possibly do in terms of maintaining a healthy lifestyle, especially in terms of staying on track with that? Yeah, so with type 1 diabetes, it's all about learning the portion sizes mm -hmm. and also learning how to count your carbs with the amount of insulin that you have to inject. Yeah. So just to match that and how to like learn how to do read the labels and how to make it practically for yourself as well. Sure. And, uh, you know, when we talk about type 2 diabetes, yes. what are the differences and what do we need to do to maintain a healthy lifestyle for that? So with type 2 diabetes, if you're on oral medication, it's just about choosing the right type of carbs. So mm. switching out your high GI carbs for that higher fiber carbs. Yeah. Something that also can help is to have protein with each of your meals. So protein actually can help decrease the glycemic response of those carbs because it keeps the carbs longer in the stomach and helps to release it slower. Mm. So when we're talking about, you know, just the different things that people don't necessarily know, because, for example, I know that some people don't know the differences between type 1 and type 2 diabetes, yes. but let's talk about the misconceptions because, like we said, yes. it's all about getting information on this day. What are the top five misconceptions that you think people have in terms of really not knowing what exactly is happening? Okay, so the one is not to take prediabetes seriously. Okay. Because at prediabetes, you still have so much opportunity to correct it a little it. Mm. Whereas when it gets to the diabetes, it is like a lifelong condition. Yeah. So to definitely take that opportunity and make the best of what you can from it. The one is also another misconception is that if you eat too much sweet things, that that will lead to diabetes. So it won't, Simone? Not necessarily. Oh my, case. I need to tell my mother because <laughs> she has been telling me since I was a kid. Okay, yes. yes. Yeah. So if you have like birthday cake, it's not going to mean and it's very sweet that you're just going to get diabetes. Mm. Yes. Okay. And number three. Okay, so another one would be that um, you can't get diabetes if you're living a healthy lifestyle. Okay. So there is still cases like with medical conditions that increases your risk. Wow. For example, with polycystic ovary syndrome, mm. that does increase your risk to develop insulin resistance and thereafter diabetes as well. Yeah. So it's not, not always that you're doing bad at life and then you get diabetes. Mm. Sometimes there is other factors that contribute to it as well. So is that why you said you always need to make sure that you're getting screened? Because yes. even if you run 10 kilometers a day and you yes. eat the healthiest diet ever, you can yes. still possibly get diabetes. Definitely. Sure, okay. Yeah. So screening is very important mm. as well. Okay. Yes. Uh, do you have another one for us? When while we wrap things up. A funny one that I heard is that <laughs> sometimes when you have hyperglycemia, I can just drink water and it will fix the sugar. Okay. But it definitely won't. Hectic. Oh, Simone, you've literally just crushed all our dreams in terms of what <laughs> we knew when it comes to diabetes. But I love it because you are educating us, which is exactly yes. what we need, you know? Yes. Uh, can I also just ask you, when we talk about kids and diabetes, yes. uh, what are the best things that parents can do in terms of making sure that my child doesn't get diabetes? So with kids, sometimes it's type 1 diabetes, mm. which is not something that you can necessarily prevent. Yeah. So just to get the screening, to make sure that they are living a healthy lifestyle as well, and to make sure that the meals at home are like balanced and healthy, mm. to get them maybe into like sports, to make sure that they have physical activity, etc. So just to promote a healthy lifestyle as well. Yes. Uh, and I mean, that's what you need to have for a child in general. Yes. So I love that. We just need to keep doing what yes. we're doing as the super parents. Exactly. Simone, you are incredible. Thank you so much for joining us today. And like I said before, honestly, you and the work that you're doing, let's continue to meet up every World Diabetes Day, can Perfect. we? Amazing. Her name is Simone Bluchnote. She was letting us in on what we need to know on World Diabetes Day. Right now, though, of course, you need to get ready for everything else that is coming up on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Do not go anywhere.